after four days of hiking in the Andes and successfully conquering the Salkante Pass with my parents, we have finally made our way to the lost Incan city of Machu Picchu. Visiting this wonder of the world has always been higher on a bucket list, and today I'll be showing you what it's like to tour this ancient city. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Nicole and Miko. Today is the day that we finally get to see the ancient city of Machu Picchu. We're going to be taking you around with us today and at the same time we'll be giving you as many tips as we can so that you can plan your next visit to Machu Picchu. Six in the morning there's already a big lineup. Six? Or five I think it's five. <laughs> oh my god, did I sleep an hour more? Five <clears> o'clock <throat> in the morning there's already a big lineup. Yep, ready to go to Machu Picchu for 6 a.m.? So the first tip that we have is buy your tickets as early as you can. We'll talk more about tickets later on, but we chose the 6 a.m. tickets and it's around 5.15 right now. We're waiting for the bus to take us up to Machu Picchu and I think it's gonna be well worth it because it gets incredibly hot during the day. Also in this line, you can find a lot of people who are offering tour guide services in different languages. We had a bunch of people just come up to us asking if we need an English tour guide. So if you don't have a tour guide to, to walk you around Machu Picchu, that's something you can easily get in the lineup for the bus going up to Machu Picchu. So we are on our way now from Aguas Calientes to Machu Picchu and Aguas Calientes is like the place that you need to get to if you're trying to visit Machu Picchu because that is the town that is really the jumping off point for Machu Picchu. So there's lots of different ways to get to Aguas Calientes. One of the ways of course is to hike the Salcante Trek which is what we just did. People know about the Inca Trail, that's one way to get to Aguas Calientes. You can also take a train, you could take like a bus and then do a little bit of walking. There's a handful of different options to get there. But once you get to Aguas Calientes, in order to actually go and see Machu Picchu, you have two options for how to get to the mountain. Like it's a big mountain, right? You're actually just on top of a big mountain. So you can either take a bus, which is what we are doing right now. It takes about half an hour to get from Aguas Calientes town to the entrance to Machu Picchu. Or the other option is to actually hike it. It's a four kilometer hike. It's quite steep, and I hear that takes about an hour and a half. So if you've got 6 a.m. tickets to enter Machu Picchu, like we do, you might want to try the bus. Might want to try the bus. All right, first impressions of Machu Picchu site. A lot of stairs. There are a lot of <laughs> steps to come up. So the first 15 minutes is just like stairs. Getting here early in the morning is so cool because. The lights like coming over the mountains. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. The mountain range is like a silhouette. Yeah, the mountain range is like a silhouette. And there's still a couple of stars out. Man, it's gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> we got some uh, llamas joining us. They're like, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> I feel like this site can't get any more like Peruvian. There's like the llama here, right? A uh, Machu Picchu. Just walk around. Think let me pet him. I think they're pedaling. I don't know. I saw some other guy touch the one that walked the grass. He like pet him oh, as really? he walked past. Yeah, how cool is that? I want to do that. Oh, he's very, very busy. Go, go. Finally made it. The most iconic spot is what we hiked the last like four days for. Machu Picchu has been on our bucket list for like a long time. Mm. And I know we've been in South America for like five months now. Yeah. But it's been so cool it's to like so work our way to this point and finally mm. get here and finally see in person. This is like the most iconic spot to take photos. It's just like I bet maybe we haven't been in here for like ten minutes of like proper walking if you were to just like walk here quickly. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Mom, Dad, yeah. thoughts on Machu Picchu? No food in the world can do it justice. I really agree. Good. Everything you hope for your bucket list? Yeah. Yeah? We wanted to come for ages. You made it. <laughs> 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 I'm so glad you made it. Me too. I'm so glad I get to come with you. Me too. <laughs> yeah. I can't get over just how majestic thing, things look up here. Like really unique to see like a mountain and then like a city 
nestled in like the cradle of that mountain. It's so beautiful. And then on either side is like a sharp drop into a valley. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to fall off the edge. No. I'm not finding you again. And it's cool because the guide was talking about how like it's so difficult to see this city. Like, from below. From below. At the last part of our, our hike yesterday, we were actually circling Machu Picchu from the river down below. And like you could hardly see anything no, was up there. Never know if you were looking for it. No, I, mean, I could see why it'd be like hidden, hidden, lost. <laughs> a lost city for like 400 years. That's so cool. So we just sat still for about 45 minutes, and our guide, Gijo, told us all about yeah Machu Picchu and like the history of this place and how it was founded and we're well, not founded how it was found in 1911 and then just like excavated to what we see today and it's just like this completely operational city that just went sort of dark after um, the Spanish came in the 1500s and it sat here for like 400 years but we would highly recommend if you're able to to get a guide when you come here it just gives so much more context to what you're seeing otherwise like not you start to feel like you're just walking around like rocks right we've done that before in places where we're like cool another statue that i know nothing about or a structure that i know nothing about but if you get a guide you learn the history and understand what the heck all of this cool stuff can teach us okay this is like the official entrance to the city of like the where everyone would have lived and like where the religious site was the university all that kind of stuff right through here where my parents can get a photo do they look cute <laughs> The fertility temple? Yeah, my parents are attempting to get me to go in the fertility temple. <laughs> I'm not going. Yeah, Nicole's parents really want us to walk in there. Have a few kids in a few years. Yeah, they, they're, they're, they're pretty close to picking Nicole up and just throwing her inside the fertility <laughs> temple. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, okay. <laughs> So the other thing to think about if you were coming to Machu Picchu is of course what you're gonna wear. So um, you may have noticed if you watched the Stock and Day video that for the last five days we've been like living in these 100% alpaca hoodies. They're from Appalachian Gear Company. We absolutely love them. They're their alpaca fleece hoodies and we're just in love with them. We wanted to try something different from Merino, like another technical fiber. Um, and this has so far been really doing the trick. They're super durable, really versatile, and they're really good in every weather. Like this morning was really chilly. And then as the sun comes out, like we're still wanting to wear them because they just like keep you cool when it's hot and warm when it's cold. And Anyways, we're in love with them. So if you want to give them a try or take a look at the company, we will put a link down in the description below. And there's also a discount code for anybody watching this video. So the Incans were incredibly brilliant people who were so tuned in with the sun. They have um, down there is the Temple of the Sun. And when it's just right during the summer solstice, the sun would shine through from above the mountains and hit a window and then would shine into a circular table inside the Temple of the Sun. And during the summer solstice, the sun would shine out from over there, which is the sun gate. And then it would shine down through a, another window inside the temple of the sun to back to the same table. So everything is aligned with the solstices. It's super neat to see how they've incorporated that into their culture. A couple other pieces of helpful information if you are coming to Machu Picchu soon. You need your passport to get in, your original passport to get in. There are no washrooms in Machu Picchu, so there is a washroom like before you actually enter the site, so you can use that for two solas. Um, and also, there are there's a snack place right outside of Machu Picchu, like the entrance as well. And now, ever since um, just changes with COVID times, um, you can only go one direction. So once you kind of choose your circuit at the beginning of when you get to Machu Picchu, the Machu Picchu site, you go one direction and you cannot turn around. I think for the circuit as well, definitely follow circuit number two, which is high and long, and that will get you to the spot where you can take like that super nice photo, the picturesque one of Machu Picchu. And as well, you can, uh, gives you the most options for seeing the as many things as you can throughout the city. We're honestly learning so much from our guide. You can't go through Machu Picchu and just like look and, and read about stuff because number one, there's not really any signs to read about. And number two, everything is just so subtle. Like having a guide and walking us through all the important spots and like pointing out like the cool nuances and the details and then tying it back to Incan culture is so important. So we highly recommend that you get a guide either with a tour company like uh, we did on the way here with the Salcante and Machu Picchu, or if you can get one at the beginning, at the bottom of the, where we, where we grabbed the bus. Because we're learning so much and I don't understand how you can walk through this without being like, 
a true Incan scholar and know what you're looking at. So you can buy a separate ticket for lots of different things here. We bought a separate ticket for Huayna Picchu, which is another mountain that we're going to climb up. And the purpose is to get beautiful views of Machu Picchu from really high up. But I won't, I'm a little nervous. It looks very steep. Apparently it only takes 45 minutes to an hour to get up, but I don't know. Feeling. I actually feel pretty good. I honestly think we're like two thirds or three quarters of the way there. We've like made really good progress. Almost there. Almost there. Wow. <laughs> awesome job. We did it. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> Alright, so this place is not for the faint of heart. If you don't like heights or get a feeling of vertigo when you're up this high, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you can stomach it, so far it's been 30 seconds or a minute here and it's been already well worth it. Okay, that was great. <laughs> that was awesome. We made it in like 50 minutes or something. It honestly yeah. wasn't as terrible as I thought I expected it to be. I don't know if you can see it behind us, but epic views of Machu Picchu. This is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. 360 Dad, degree view. Dad's right here. We're just keeping her safe. <laughs> There's not a lot of room on this rock. <laughs> no, there isn't. There's not a lot of room. The top's weird. It's just like everyone's just like on top of huge boulders. Up here. Just big rocks and everyone's just climbing on top. And like, it just you don't want to misstep because... Yeah. Bad. <laughs> yeah, it could be a long drop. I definitely think it's worth getting an extra ticket for wine and peach. I agree. If you've got the time, this is a pretty spectacular view. It's very unique. And the energy. You need the energy. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna start heading back down. See you guys in Agus Calientes. To the train. You can also take the train like to Aguas Calientes for part of the journey if you didn't hike like we did. This is actually our first time being on the train because first we hiked here, uh, but we're super stoked for it because it goes through part of the Sacred Valley which we haven't seen yet. So we're hoping not to fall asleep because we are a little exhausted, <laughs> but we really want to be able to watch the beautiful scenery go by. And this should bring us all the way to Oyen Tembo and then we'll just catch a bus from there. It lives up to its height. Yeah. And also, this train ride is also living up to its height. It's been so beautiful going through the Sacred Valley here. The scenery is impressively managing to keep us awake, which I think is like a serious drop today because we're pretty exhausted. It's been, a long, it's been a long day and a long five days. We're really excited to get back and take some rest. Yes, and actually tomorrow we drop my parents off at the airport, so... <laughs> so we're saying goodbye to them. We're saying goodbye to them tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we're gonna leave you there. We're gonna catch it in the next one just on our own again. Yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>